Hey, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. This is Angela Henderson. And today for sketch practice, I am going to show you how to set up and use the block tool to create your cabinets in your kitchen. And also how to work with um, the different symbols um, that are available. Sometimes people like to graphically represent uh, some of the elements of the kitchen or other rooms like the bathroom, for example. And I'm going to show you how to use that tool as well. Um, so you got a two for one today. So I've already created a basic layout. This is pretty much you walk in the door, go into your living room, here's your kitchen and your eat-in. So just to give you an idea of what floor plan we're working with, got your huge picture windows, walking through your kitchen, blah. Okay? So... Um, what we're going to do now is, because we're working with our kitchen today, um, we're going to focus on that area. Make that a little bit bigger. And we're going to start laying in some of our elements of the kitchen. Now, the reason I like to do this first is if you're going to incorporate them in there anyway, sometimes people will, sometimes they won't. Some of your firms and carriers, they don't care if you've um, left room for the refrigerator or for the stove. But if you want to represent everything, then uh, this would be a good way to do it. So if you're not replacing those items, um, you don't want to put in a, a line item that's going to be attached to the replacement or removal. Um, so you just want to use a symbol. And that's where this little guy here comes in. This is on your search list option, um, so basically your default uh, view when you come into Xactimate. And I'm an X1, so it may look a little bit different than you guys um, who are using 28, but it's the same uh, basic premise. So you go in to your symbols, you're going to search for your appliances. So let's say, for example, in this kitchen, we have a dishwasher that we want to lay in there and make reference to. And let's say the dishwasher is underneath, maybe like offset, but underneath uh, one of the windows um, along this far wall. And then let's say we have a range that we want to account for also offset okay and you can actually change the size of these things I just want you to know so it defaults to two sticks but if you want to put a different size you could make it fit within the parameters of your room and then let's say we have a refrigerator oh, double door refrigerator we'll put that guy over in the corner and I'm using I'm going to use the rotate tool here to just move this around to the way it would look. You see here the double door is going to be in the front, hopefully, so you can get your food out. So we're going to put that guy kind of here in the corner, give a little bit of space. So now we're going to lay in our cabinets around these elements of the room. Just giving some standard cabinets, nothing fancy. And as you can see, I'm not even trying to measure. I'm just using this for the graphic illustration. Now you want your cabinets, usually your cabinets are going to butt up against whatever appliances are laid in. So you do want to have those touch. But you guys know with your refrigerators, when you see them in place, usually those refrigerators have a little bit of space in between them uh, to fit those, uh, fit that particular appliance in. And we've got some more cabinets on this side. Two feet deep is your standard. Now we've got our lower cabinets all set in. You can label them one, two, and three if you want, especially if you're going to have reference to those in your 
in your report, or you can just label them lowers, doesn't matter. Now you've got your cabinets laid in there. So when you take a look at it, it's not going to look like a dishwasher with, um, you know, all bells and whistles or a stove. But it is going to show you that you have your place markers there for something, which explains why you have those breaks in your cabinetry. Okay. And then again, if you're actually looking at the estimate, the sketch in the estimate, you'll be able to see why it's set up that way. So if we throw in some upper cabinets, and you know, if I was smart, I would have put these um, lower, I would have put these appliances um, further along the wall here so I could illustrate how you can have your upper cabinets run above those appliances, which is what you typically will see. But I wasn't too smart this morning, so I wasn't I wasn't really uh, with it. So we're not going to put cabinets here because these are windows. You almost got me. You thought you had me, but you didn't get me. And our uppers are typically going to be your one foot deep. So this is our upper two. Upper cabinet number two. And we're going to give it some height off the floor so it's not sitting directly on top of our existing cabinets. And do the same thing here. Upper one. Give it some height. Now I'm going to look at it. Oh, it looks a lot more like the kitchen that we walked into, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, homeowner. Very nice to meet you today. So that's how you can use the block tool um, and your symbols uh, to be able to rep represent what you see um, in layout in the home when you go out and, and start looking at these claims for estimating purposes. And I'm going to do this a little bit shorter so you can see that. I'll just make it seven. So you can, oh, that's not what I meant to do. Six. Uh, it's not letting me do it. Man, you're messing up my video. I just wanted you to be able to see the words. That's all. Um, just so you can see so it's not so gobbledy when you're looking at this to try and practice with. But, of course, you want to get the accurate <laughs> measurements. So don't worry about the words so much. I can show you in another exercise how to make sure that the words don't overlap one another. But that wasn't the point of today's exercise. Today was all about symbols um, and using those in reference in your kitchen um, and the block tool. Thanks for watching.